let us take a look at the karma overview you can see on top a blue circle as the net karma account i call it sanchita karma is the net karma account from this blue there is a arrow blue arrow where you can see a chart called the jataka this is my chart and this jataka was created by withdrawal by withdrawing a certain current a certain amount so the amount that was withdrawn will have some good karmas and will have some bad karmas and these good karmas and bad karmas will attach to both all the grahas all grahas will have good karma and bad karma associated with one color one vibration one khata as we call it there are nine different khatas nine different books and one book let us say jupiter's book will have certain good karma and certain bad karma similarly there are nine such books so the prarabdh karma is the withdrawal based upon which the jataka was created that is green because it is symbolic of earth sanchita i showed as blue because the sky i came from the sky somewhere and i came to this earth and in earth you can see the green arrow going to the left where i am doing karmas and in the process i am having karma earnings these earn these earnings can be positive or the earnings can be negative and also this curve these earnings can be related to any of the nine books based upon that these books constant entries are being made constant entries are being made and the one who is making entries is called the chitra gupta so some astrologers devised a fantastic method what happens if i can do a mantra by which this guy who's keeping the accounts makes mistakes or i can bribe that guy even worse you see my point they think that by bribing chitra gupta or by worshiping chitra gupta he will fail to keep the accounts properly they don't understand that the accounts boss is ganesha and he has a master who can correct every mistake made by everyone chitra gupta can say oh lord i made a mistake oh ganesha lord i made a mistake but ganesha will correct it straight away he is too clever so the very thought of cheating the records is creating bad manasa karma the thought is creating bad manasa karma the thought of of bribing chitra gupta is again bad manasa karma now imagine if you sat down and actually did those dirty mantras by which you are trying to bribe chitra gupta so that he makes a mistake that you have also created bad kriya mana karma and that too in a in the area of prayers which is jupiter's book you are dirtying jupiter's book don't dirty jupiter's book because then your jupiter whatever it may be in your birth chart will not show you that favor and this kriya mana karma we get to know from prashna but the peculiarity of the prashna is you cannot ask a prashna about yourself so you need to go to some other astrologer and find out it is like a person who cuts the hair a barber a barber cannot cut his own hair he needs to go to another barber bear this in mind bear this few things in mind it is important that when you do jyotish the first thing you need to do is to find out one jyotish who will guide you who is going to guide you who is going to see the prashna chart for you you need to find somebody whom you will trust in the long run it could be one of your colleagues who is learning you you could have a understanding with him and both of you can do for each other you can also have understanding that we will do this once in 3 months or once in 6 months when i feel like asking i will come when you feel like asking you come because that feeling is important that is the seed to correct prashna chart okay now note so long as sanchita karma lasts a portion called prarabdha karma is extracted for an incarnation leading to the cycle of birth and death jiva cannot attain moksha 
until the accumulated sanchita karma is exhausted. Therefore, from one birth horoscope, it is not possible for you to say with a hundred percent certainty that the person will get moksha. So all the dictums which say that the person gets moksha, he goes to moksha, he goes here, he goes there, are only telling the direction in which you are going. It cannot guarantee you are going, reaching the destination. So Jyotish cannot confirm that yes, you will get moksha from your birth chart. Then, because in this life you will create sanchi, create mana karma. When you die, there will be a day you will die. The day you die, that chart that is drawn for the moment shall be called the Punya Chakra. That Punya Chakra is an extremely crucial chakra. Because that tells us the total Kriya Mana Karma created from your birth till your death. Some grahas will become terrible. Some grahas will become superb. But the study of the Punya chart is completely different than the study of the Jataka. It is completely different. The whole process is different. The houses of focus are different. The important houses are completely different. Okay? So all theosophies and religions that are ripened accept the theory of karma. All theosophies and all religions which are, which are in a ripened state, ready to be eaten by men of knowledge, of understanding and of intellect, they will under, fully grasp and take this theory of karma and take it into their soul. Because, because if they do not, then they are like raw fruits. Raw fruits, when you eat it, it is tasteless. You derive no benefit from it. And karma alone can explain the difference between beings, the right at the time of birth. Why is somebody born as a prince with a golden spoon is in his mouth? Why is somebody a pauper? Why is somebody healthy? Why does somebody have bad health? Why is somebody physically is so beautiful? Why is somebody having eye problems, let's say blind? Why is someone such a demagogue and why is someone speechless? All these differences, no science in this world can explain other than Jyotisha Shastra. Therefore, Jyotisha is the highest of the sciences and it is Vijnana. Not Jnana, Vijnana. Jnana is that which takes you to God, the door of God. Vijnana is that which helps you to understand His creation. That is the difference. Science is an understanding of the creation, God's creation. It is not an understanding of God. So Jyotish is a Vijnana because it gives you knowledge of the Jyotisha. Vedanga Jyotisha is also Jnana because it takes you towards God. So it is both Vijnana and Jnana. But the level at which we Brihat Parashara is and the way we will be learning it, we are urged to understand this as a Vijnana, as a science and not get at this level and at this stage do not get carried away. Be as scientific, be as questioning. Treat it as something which you must question and learn. Because if you do not, you are not treating it as Vigyan. And that scientific temper you will lose. And if you lose scientific temper, you will not get Jyotish Vidya. Am I clearly understood? Agni Tattva requires logic. Mars is the greatest logician. He is a superb mathematician. He has energy to work tirelessly. He is strong at all times. Those are the qualities of Mangala that you have to imbibe. Different religions explain the karma details from different viewpoints. Okay. The basics are mostly the same. Mostly good in-depth religion, deep religion, they will be able to, 
they will take the karma theory and explain it nicely the basics of sanchita karma prarabdha karma and kriyamana karma they may use different words but more or less the basics are going to be the same some will be technically more detailed like like there could be branches like the jains jain jainism they go into uh, quite a lot of details in quite a lot of way the dravyas and the they go into a lot of details very interesting to study others take a more philosophical and a more broad because they feel that going into details could be distracting from your actions like the broad like jyotisha takes nine and then goes into details so the basics are the same yet they differ in the higher levels in the higher level they will differ because ultimately when it comes to finding a way to go from this world what is kriyaman what is that kriyamana karma by which i can finish my bank balance of sanchita karma the highest question highest what is the highest question i have sanchita karma and i am also creating kriyamana karma which is adding to the sanchita karma so what is that kriyamana karma that i can do by which i can burn all the sanchita karma burn that library where those books are kept i am free is it not so so what we are looking at here is an answer to that or that is the ultimate vedic remedy the ultimate solution to our problems the highest vedic remedy different religions will offer different formulas as jyotish does not jyotish does not offer the formula for this it does not and it cannot that is the limitation of jyotish he is not supposed to cross his limits so he is not a diksha guru he is a shiksha guru he will teach the subject from a vigyana point of view not pure gyana for that you need kalpa the diksha guru <coughs> different diksha gurus will give you different philosophies of reaching the penultimate goal of burning all your sanchita karma and attaining mukti depending upon these philosophies that you accept and the acceptance of a certain philosophy by which you go to a certain path is again based upon your prarabdha karma interesting is very interesting so the question is how much of free will do i have you have free will because in certain places god has given you choices if you did not have any free will there can be no kriyamana karma so there is a certain amount of free will called th- about 33% only based upon rashi is not grahas because the moment a graha is coming into the picture it is grahana that means it is it is forcing you to experience karmas of last initiations that is the meaning of the word graha so only the rashis have the capacity for creating fresh karma because they are like a field of opportunity and you are exploiting this opportunity and so you are creating the karmas and these rashi is where you grow the upachayas the very concept of growth is what creates karma why do you want to grow grow from where grow taller grow bigger grow richer it is only at a comparative level all growth is comparative grow fatter than whom it is comparative so all growth is always comparative and that which is comparative is only a manifestation of kali yuga everything that is comparative is a manifestation of kali yuga if you enjoy something you enjoy it why where is the need to compare so growth or the upachaya is the area of free will and it is likely that in that area of free will you will make your maximum mistakes and that you will create kriyamana karma and the creation of such a kriyamana karma will be your own undoing 
So the question debate on fate and free will, you know people debate for hours together on fate and free will. There is no free will. To which there is one simple answer. If there is no free will, what is the meaning of Kriya Mana Karma? How do you create Kriya Mana Karma? You see the point? You cannot create it if there is no free will. Okay, now the, at the higher levels, the different philosophies accept different things. One of the major questions is whether there is God. Is there a God? Is there a supreme being, some supreme being, some supreme personality who can or alter the karma account completely? That he has the power, he can take a matchstick and light fire to all your karma, sanchita karma. Is there such a supreme being? If it is, there is. Then I must take shelter him, him, or her, or whoever that is, so that my sanchita karma is gone. So there are schools who believe in such a supreme being. Then there are the schools who do not believe in such a supreme being. That will largely depend upon your own soul. Is your soul having pride or it is not having that much pride? Ahankara or ego is the difference. And it need not be so also, depending upon the logic that is given by the schools. For example, some schools may believe that there is no supreme being. All karma is created by you and you alone are responsible for your creation and your salvation. You are your God. Why are you going to some God? Why are you wasting time going to this God and that God? There is no God. Buddha Dharma. Buddha Dharma. Buddhism. Buddhism in its purest concept is this. Then the funny thing is, you see, you go around and see places of worship of Buddha, where statues of Buddha are made and they are worshipping Buddha. The people who are worshipping Buddha don't understand that basically you are doing exactly that which Gautam Buddha told you not to do. So that means somewhere down the line some fellows have corrupted and therefore these streams, you see the original is always beautiful, subsequently the streams and they have gone into Tantric Buddhism as it is in Tibet, then there are all kinds of things. My question is, when you are creating a new religion, let's say Tantric Buddhism, then it is no longer Buddhism because the Tantric has come in. Because Buddhism doesn't permit the worship of idols. It is fundamentally wrong because there is no God. You are God. You have to do your karmas and you have to solve your karmic problem of creation. And you alone can do it. It empowers you to do it. It makes you equal to a rishi because the rishis don't depend upon the gods. They don't depend upon the devtas. They are creating their karmas and they are solving their problems. So from that point of view, Buddha Dharma is fantastic. But if you want a being, you feel that there must be a supreme power who is actually governing this whole universe and who is actually running this whole universe and not just karma. Then you will want to give a name to him because by name you can reach him. You will want to give a form to him because by form you will understand him then there are those who say he cannot have a form. Supreme being with a form, supreme being without a form. Param Brahma, no form. Having form is those who follow the path of Agni. Agni means form. They need a form. Those who say no, the path of Agni is wrong. No form, formless. So you must understand that all these people are basically looking for a solution to the Sanchita Karma problem. And none of them have a definite answer. Because he who has got moksha has not come back to tell you how he got it. And in such a predicament, it is only speculation that stands. And, and the better logic and the better argument and the better defense somebody can give, we tend to follow such a person. Because by nature, 
man is always looking at he who can give the best arguments and the best defense for his thought. But the truth need not be on the best arguments and on the best thought. Because arguments and thought are again based upon words which manifest and words which manifest are not the truth. Because the truth cannot manifest. Only Maya can manifest. So by whatever argument I see, I don't know from a Jyotish Vigyana point of view. Because what I am giving you now is the Jyotish Vigyana. From the Jyotish Vigyana point of view, it is very obvious that no Jyotishi has an authority to say that you must follow this path or you must follow this path or you must follow this path. What remedial measures Parashara will teach us will be based upon the path he believes. But that is Parashara because he was not just a Jyotishi. He was a Vedic Rishi. But you are not Vedic Rishis, you are only Jyotishis. So please bear the difference in mind. And remember that people will come with different viewpoints. Don't put your own viewpoint. If somebody, I always ask, if you see I have a form in which I ask, what is your faith? If the person says I am a Buddhist, I am a practicing Buddhist, I stick to Buddha. I never give the person a Shiva mantra or something like that. Never. Unless they specifically ask me so. Because it is not a part of my karma to alter their faith, to change their faith. I am not their Diksha Guru. A Jyotishi must understand his limitations. Because the moment you try to alter somebody's faith, you are taking upon yourself the karma of that person. And one-sixth of the karma, negative karma of Guru, shall be yours to keep. And if you keep doing this with everybody, imagine what will happen to your Jupiter bank balance. So unless you are a Diksha Guru, that means there is a lineage which is protecting you and permitting you and directing you to do so, you are not authorized to do so. Am I clear? Next slide. Now here, we are once again going to go a bit more deeper now into the Prarabdha Karma. Sanchita Karma we have understood, we can leave it now. It is, we have nothing to do with it as far as Jyotish is concerned. That is the job of the Diksha Guru. Prarabdha Karma is our domain. Our domain is the Prarabdha Karma. Prarabdha Karma can be further divided into three types. Dridha Karma, Dridha means fixed. Please say the word Dridha. dridha. Ah, fixed. That cannot be changed. Even you don't have the power to change it. So don't try. It is better to tell the person, it is very difficult to change this karma. Dridha karma. That which you will have to experience. Then next, Adridha. Please say it again. Adridha karma. Not firm and can be altered by various means. So this is karma which you can alter, which you can change. And how can you change it? We have discussed this by Kriyamana Karma. Good Kriyamana Karma, Vedic remedies, can easily alter Dhrida Karma. In fact, you do not even need Vedic remedies for this. Simply good karmas, good karmas, you can solve the problem. Do good and good shall be done to you. That is Adhrida. You have options. Options have been given to you. It is a part of your contract. Your contract could be different from somebody else's contract. Somebody could have that particular part of the contract in Dridha. You could have that part of the contract in Adridha. Then comes the third category. Dridha Dridha. Dridha Dridha. Mutable. Mutable means both Dridha and Adridha. It is, it is movable, it is changeable. But it is also fixed, that means it is not easy to change. That means these are, 
it's like diseases that can be cured but will require more than just crocine right you will you will need to deal with it in some more depth with some more seriousness with some more challenges so we have got three types dridha adridha and drida dridha now the rashis are supposed to be the manifestations of the prarabdha karma so these three types of prarabdha karma we are now going to put into the 12 rashis the chara rashis aries cancer libra and capricorn mesha karka tula and makar these are movable and which was the thing which was movable mute which can change adrida adrida means not firm they can move they can change you can alter it so chara rashi is represent adrida karma now take the signs taurus leo scorpio and aquarius these are fixed rashis fixed means that which cannot move therefore they are having drida karma so the question is did these rashis become fixed rashis and that is why they are having drida karma no it is because they have drida karma that is why they are fixed rashis which came first did the rashi come first or did the karma come first karma, karma came first since karma came first these fixed rashis called taurus vrishabha simha vrishchika and kumbha these four fixed signs or what we call sthira rashi have adrida karma that is why they are fixed the chara rashis have adrida karma that is why they are movable sthira rashis drida karma that is why they are fixed and dushobhava rashis the mutable signs the dual signs which are they the gemini the virgo Gem, uh, sagittarius and pisces they are dridha dridha that means they are mutable they have a certain amount of fixity fixed karmas and a certain amount of dual karmas i mean movable karmas so basically i can call karmas as movable karmas fixed karmas and dual karmas simple as that so i have these three types <coughs> now it will be very interesting to know that mercury and jupiter are ruling those karmas which are dridha dridha which can be changed which can be altered because the signs gemini and virgo are ruled by mercury and the signs sagittarius and pisces are ruled by jupiter so these two planets have the power to alter even the most difficult almost dridha but not fully dridha karmas see my point okay so now you have understood the three types of karmas so prarabdha karma is dridha adridha dridha dridha and this is based upon the rashis okay so does it mean that you will have more planets in those uh, things that means those are the karma prima facie it does prima facie it will indicate that let us say you have a lot of planets in chara rashis mm -hmm. that means here is a person who has a contract in which he can alter he has given the power to alter he has been given the power to change things <coughs> and it need not be planets in chara rashis too many planets you you need to have one planet and the dasha of that planet has to run if the dasha of the planet runs you have the capacity or the empowerment to change things around you to bring about complete changes but remember when you do so you will be creating more kriyamana karma 
So the issues you must bear in mind are, it is a very peculiar situation as a Jyotishi. If planets are in Chararashis, they are definitely in Adridha Karma. If it is Adridha Karma, then obviously you have an option to change things easily. And it is possible when things get easy for you, you try to misuse your powers. And you will suffer consequently because you have created a lot of karmas, kriya, kriyamana karma in the process. What is Kriya Yoga? Kriya Yoga is nothing but the yogic process of deleting all your Sanchita Karmas through good Kriyamana Karmas, hence the name Kriya Yoga. Very simple, a very simple Jyoti's definition of Kriya Yoga. Now what happens when you have too many planets and fixed signs? Planets in fixed signs can definitely indicate Adrida Karma, which you will have to face. And normally you will see the best of astrologers have a lot of planets in fixed signs because God doesn't give you too many options. Then he knows you'll probably read a lot of Jyotish books. Right? And so <laughs> you may not be able to alter everything in your life even after re reading so much of Jyotish largely because in your own horoscope some of the planets cannot be changed. Houses, certain houses cannot be changed. So things will change, you know, depending upon what your lagna is. If you have a certain kind of, if you have a certain lagna, certain houses will go into fixed karma. For a person born in Mesha lagna, the seventh house, for example, of marriage uh, could be is Tula which is adrida, not fixed. It is changeable. It is possible that uh, you could uh, have a, a very changeable concept. It is possible if your seventh lord is in a movable sign, you could be very fleeting when it comes to uh, karma associated with the seventh house. Depends, you know, how you look at it. The issue is, bear in mind, what is being defined here is dridha fixed. Adrida not fixed or movable, and drida drida, which is dual mutable. Based upon this, we have three types of Rashis called Chara Rashi, Sthira Rashi, and Dushobhav Rashi. So these three types of Rashis are created from these three types of karmas, for the purpose of these three types of karmas. If these three types of karmas are not there, you don't need these three types of Rashis. The karma creates the Rashi, Rashi is not creating the karma. Okay.